Okay, so I'll map out on the paper just so that you can see now how things are. So what we're going to do is we're going to have some silver birches kind of coming up across this side of the paper. And then we're going to have like a rolling white slope coming down across the paper here. We're going to have some trees here and we're going to have a glimpse of sunrise over here. So we're going to have the beams of light coming through the trees over on this side. So a lot of the detail is going to be towards this side of the paper, hence why I've got it a little bit off centre. But what I'll do later is I'll move the paper around if there's something that you need to see and, and my screen doesn't really allow it very well. So I wonder if I can actually bring it in a tiny bit closer. Let me see if I can move my tripod and bring it in a tiny bit closer for you. There we go. That's a bit better. Okay. <clears throat> so I've also got some masking tape. I did mention on the thing that I might be using a bit of masking tape. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to mark out where I want my trees to go. Um, because... Oh, sorry, I'm reaching over. I'm... Um, I want to leave a nice void where I want my trees to go. So I'm gonna tear some masking tape to give me kind of an uneven tree shape. It's up to you how you do this. Got a little bit of masking tape here so this is going to go into kind of the bank of snow as it were so i'm just going to put that shape on there and then i'm just going to do another one because we're going to have quite a lot of colour going in behind. I'm just going to put this on quickly. So you can do this or you can, if you're much better at me, of leaving things um, unpainted, then you can do that instead. I'm not very good at doing that. I forget, I lose focus and then I end up with a uh, nice paint across where I want to leave blank. So, but you're probably better than me at that. So I'm gonna have another one kind of, oops, sorry, knocking the camera, that's not helpful. I'm gonna have another one that's kind of standing up a little bit straighter here. So you'll notice that these are fairly uneven bits of masking tape. That's fine, trees don't grow very symmetrical. This one behind I think and crossing over there we go
Okay, so fairly haphazardly placed pieces of tape. Okay. I hope you can all see that okay. So that's where my trees are going to go. That's where my silver birches are going to go. So the first thing I want to start with is the sunrise that I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do is to just... I want to wet the paper first of all. So my bank of snow is going to come up just before these trees start here. So I'm going to put some water onto the canvas where I want my snow bank to go. Okay. And I'm going to use a little bit of Naples yellow, I think, because I want a fairly fairly kind of apricotty looking sunrise to come down here. So I'm just gonna lift that colour throughout here. I want it quite subtle. I'm not using particularly great quality masking tape so I'm, I don't really have a great deal of confidence in what that will be like. We'll have to see but as long as it shields a little bit of it then that's fine. And I'm going to use a tiny little bit of cadmium yellow as well right where I want the actual sunrise. So that's going to be just here. I'm just going to use a bit of water to spread that wash. Just give it this lovely golden bloom here. I'm going to use a tiny bit of my tissue paper because I would like to have where the sun is at its brightest. I'm going to remove the paint so that it's mostly white. So just here I'm going to have the sun peeking out over the brow of the hill. So I'm just going to move, absorb some of the paint there because I want it to be at its brightest there. I'm going to do is put a tiny bit of Indian yellow right on the brow of the hill here. Because I want it to hold that lovely sort of golden wash as it were. So I think we've got a really nice blend there now. Hopefully. So as it comes out a tiny little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of, hmm, what should I add? A little tiny bit of magenta, I think, into this wash. I want it to have kind of a kind of a pinky halo to it and I'm going to be adding a few kind of clouds that are just disappearing into the morning that were obviously there of an evening and now they're disappearing as the sun rises
So I just want a faint hint of pink. So a little bit of magenta. So I'm not being that careful with placement. Just using lots of water to try and bring a sort of a softness to this. I'm worried it's not registering that much on the camera, but hopefully, hopefully it will register more as it dries. And then you'll be able to see what I mean. I'm just gonna use a slightly bigger wash brush now because I want to have um, some blue up here because there's gonna be the arrival of the morning and the evening is gonna go. So I want to have, let's have a look. I'm gonna use a little bit of ultramarine So again, I'm using real faint color because this is a really frosty morning. You don't really have deep swells of color. I want it to have a real kind of subtle tone to it. And then as it goes up, further into the sky I'm going to use a little bit of indigo because I want that kind of inky darkness of the night going yeah it's a much better tone now let me move the camera so you can see where I'm going with that a little bit So this is gonna be really soft, really soft sort of gradual color. Okay, I hope you're reading some of that color. So we've got the Indian yellow uh, going through to a cadmium yellow. There's white where the sun is going up to a really pale magenta and then into an ultramarine and finally an indigo up here. So we've got a really soft uh, sort of gradation of colour, as it were. So down here, there's going to be another snowbank, but it's going to be deeper colour over here because you're going to have, this is where the sun's coming up and this is where um, the night is still leaving. So, um, so I'm going to do a slightly, uh, let me see if I can move this over. Oh. There you go. Hopefully you can see that a bit better. There we go, focus it. So I'm gonna bring some of that inky indigo onto the brow of the hill here. So this is a really big wash brush that I'm using here. And that colour to almost blend into nothing.
I'm gonna add some colors, uh, clouds and stuff in a minute. But I want this deep indigo here. Use a tiny little bit more. Gonna have a faint appearance of some misty trees and stuff behind here. Okay, so there's some trees just kind of over the brow of the hill. So we're going to have some clouds, some kind of evening clouds, as it were, in the middle of here now. So I'm just going to use a tiny bit of violet mixed with that indigo. Because I want to have some kind of low, thin clouds before all this water dries up. Just want to have some little clouds that kind of appear. I'm going to allow the water to bloom the colour where I want it and kind of make these kind of thin, subtle clouds. I'm not going to be careful with these. As you've probably gathered by now, I'm not a particularly careful painter. Few little wispy clouds. Now what I'm going to do, because this sunrise here is going to be reflecting onto the clouds, I'm going to touch the base of each of the clouds with a tiny little bit um, of cadmium yellow, just because I want that light to be reflected up under here and look like it's kind of hitting the base of the clouds. So I'm literally just touching it really carefully. And you get this kind of gorgeous mix where it starts leaking into the blue and you get a few interesting looking colours start to appear. I'm going to add a tiny little bit of that um, Naples yellow into it just to kind of give it that apricotty sort of look in a minute. I 
really love um, the colours of clouds and stuff when they do this. So I play this game with my girls when, we, when we're out in the car or something, or particularly when we're coming back from our holidays, when we, when we go to France on our holidays. It seems to always be that when we hit northern France, it's about the time that the sun is just setting and it looks really gorgeous. <laughs> Um, and we, we drive past the Bay of Boulogne and it just looks so beautiful. And I say to the girls, what flavour are the clouds today? And I get them to try and put a flavour on the clouds like they're cotton candy. So we get mango and raspberry and um, palmer violets, all kinds of gorgeous colours kind of arrive into them because uh, that's kind of how it feels when you see those clouds all kind of reflecting this kind of gorgeous apricotty light it kind of looks like they're little sweets up in the sky so I really love it okay so I've added a tiny little bit of the Naples yellow and I might what's just left in here of my magenta I might add a tiny little slither of magenta here and there just just for a little bit of interest I love it when the clouds kind of reflect the sunrise it's absolutely gorgeous I think nature is just the most amazing thing. We get to see all these beautiful patterns and colors and stuff appear and they're not ones that you can replicate with painting or or even with photography. Hopefully, uh, not sure if Stephanie Chapman's watching, but if she is, it's uh, it's very difficult to do it justice in photography even and that's with a very clever lens and very clever equipment and a very clever photographer if it's Stephanie <laughs> um, but it's you just can't replicate it nature's just such an incredibly amazing thing and yeah it's just absolutely stunning I'm going to darken this cloud up a little bit here because my cadmium yellow has encroached massively on my nice dark cloud up here so I'm just gonna darken it off a tiny little bit up there I want some nice dark spots on these clouds because somewhere up here where the night time is disappearing and going to the other side of the world it's inky blue so I want to have some nice inky blue up here so if I can show you over here how my frosted trees have gone over here now. So that lovely water wash that I did um, that stayed beautifully on the surface of the paper because it's a really nice quality paper. Um, so my indigo has kind of gone into this misty, frosty looking set of trees here. Um, so that is absolutely perfect. It is pretty much dry to the touch now. So what I might do is to just add a second level of trees just in front just to and these will be because it's wet on dry they're not going to blend like these ones so these ones we have to be a bit more purposeful with our strokes so I'm gonna give myself a reference line and then I'm just going to move my brush back and forward like this to make myself a fir tree. Okay, I'm gonna change up the colour slightly, add a tiny little bit of ultramarine into it just to give it a bit more of a blue hue and then I'll do another little one next to it. I'm just going back and forth here to make myself another tree. Okay, 
what I'm going to do later with my liner brush is do a few more sticks and twigs and things here. But I won't just do it. I won't do it just yet. Now I want to have where this light is reflecting down, I want to have a little bit of reflection on this bank. So where I've got my, my French um, ultramarine and my indigo, I'm going to add a tiny little bit of opaque white into that and make kind of like a powder blue and then barely touching the paper I'm going to use the brush on its side like this so I'm not holding it like that anymore I'm going to hold it like that I'm going to graze it across this bank just to give some sparse texture now this is where the cold pressed paper really comes into its own because if I lift it up to you, hopefully you'll be able to see it a bit better. So I, if I lift it up, it's just grazed the paper enough that it's giving you some texture on the snow. So it will look like the snow has laid on grass and there's a few little spiky bits and pieces sitting up in here. That's exactly what I want. So I'm going to do the same over on this side of the painting. I want to have that same texture, but this time we've got a little bit more apricot over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the same powder blue, but then we're going to use some of the apricot. So let's take a little bit of that water off. So I'm going to use it on its side. And I'm going to graze it across, I'm not being careful. I just want a few grazes here and there. Okay, so that's the way that the snow is laid. But now, where this sun is rising, it's putting down some colour on this. So. I'm going to go back to my cadmium yellow, Naples yellow, and I'm going to add a tiny little bit of the opaque white because I want a really nice creamy colour where it's hitting the snow. And then using quite a bit of water, I'm going to put some colour on here. I want this nice warm colour coming through these trees. Kind of infecting the bank. Then I want to lift the colour as well. So what I want to do, I want to lift the colour up in sunbeams. So if you imagine where the sun is and then have some lines coming out of the sun, how it's forming there, I'm going to be lifting that colour in just a moment with some tissue paper to try and make this have beams through it. So I'm just going to put a tiny bit more colour on here so that you will be able to see it. So there's a tiny little bit more there, quite haphazardly placed. And then using my scrunched up piece of tissue, I'm going to make kind of a point and then hopefully you'll be able to see this as I do it. So I'm going to have I've drawn myself a line down from there. I'm gonna draw another one here. Can you see that? And another one here. And draw another one coming across there. And another one coming across there. So what I want is for this to be 
passing beams of light over across the snow. Okay, snow is very reflective. So in order to get that kind of brightness, we've removed the paint for the sun and we're removing the paint for where the sun is casting its beam. I'm going to do the same just above the sun up here. So I'm just going to re-wet this. Now we've got our base colour under there. I'm just going to re-wet this bit and add a tiny bit more colour. Same colour that we just put on the snow. I'm just adding this here where we will see the light beams. I'm just going to make sure that the sun stays nice and white and bright and then I'm going to use my tissue again to make some subtle light beams. I'm not sure how obvious that is on camera but they're visible, they're as visible as I need them to be. Okay. So you should be able to see now that we've got light beams radiating out the top here and across the snow down here. Now as this dries, it's gonna go slightly darker, um, which is gonna be a good thing. So, um, so that will show a little bit more and hopefully when I post a picture late, later, um, you will be able to see the difference that that's making. So what I'm going to do now, I probably shouldn't, under normal circumstances I'd leave this till it's a bit drier. So it's up to you if you want to do this next step. But I'm going to take off my masking tape now because I need to move on and do my trees. So I'm going to take this away now. And this is where my trees are going to go. So let me turn the camera a little bit so you can see as I do this. So hopefully it will have masked enough that... Ooh. And this is dangerous where it starts taking off bits of the paper with it. Hopefully that should be fine. I probably stuck it down a little bit too enthusiastically when I did it. And also I'm not using very good quality masking tape. So, which is a real pain. I'm just gonna soak up a little bit of that paint there which has got away. Okay. And it doesn't matter if it has, if you find that it's seeped underneath a little bit because it doesn't matter if some of the silver birches have some of the light reflected on them that's absolutely fine well this one's ripping as well not very good but it'll be fine it'll all add to the texture i'm sure Okay, good. Right, so what we're going to do with the silver birches um, is going to be slightly different. So, so we're going to have some kind of wet on dry to begin with and then we're just going to use wet um, to smudge the trees. So I'll show you the first one, what I mean. 
So if you think about all the different colours that occur on a silver birch, so I'm going to use a little bit of sepia for kind of like the dark muddy wood. Um, I'm also going to use um, a little bit of Payne's grey because in some of the creases you get the Payne's grey look. Um, so I'm going to use a tiny bit of that as well. And then there's kind of a slightly greeny colour that you get with the discoloration on the silver bark. Um, so I might use a, an olive green for that. So I'm going to do that in just a moment. So first of all, I'm going to use the sepia and the Payne's grey. So I'm going to vary with each um, imperfection on the tree. I'm going to vary how much sepia and how much Payne's grey I use because we don't want this to be too uniform. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to do some very haphazard kind of lines on these. And hopefully this isn't gonna run. Again, normally I would try and make these once the rest of the painting is a bit more dry but we don't really have that luxury so i'm just going to put some kind of haphazard lines in Okay, so I'm making it quite haphazard. Just going to reload with a tiny bit more Payne's Grey in for this one. So this one I'm going to do... trying to stay away from the edges because I've got a funny feeling because this apricotty colour that we made is still a tiny bit wet it will start to run so I'm just gonna keep it kind of fairly away from the edges but hopefully if you're doing this watching this back um, you'll have a dry painting that you can do this on This is going to come all the way up here. Let's have a reload. I'm going to add a tiny bit more sepia, maybe even a bit of burnt umber into this one. So here we're going to do this other tree behind here. So I'm trying to be quite haphazard in how I do the bark on these because I don't want it to be um, too uniform. I kind of want it to be a little bit haphazard. So some of these I'm going to do wider. Just going to pick up a bit more Payne's Grey on this one. And some of these have bigger imperfections than others. If you keep a fairly loose grip on your brush, it will help you to be less we well, started to get a little bit too rhythmic there with it. Let's make it a little bit different now. So 
And finally, we've got the last one in front here. So we're going to add all the little branches and things in later to make these a bit more um, a bit more twiggy. Okay. So now you will start to see a bit more of how it's going to look happen. So what I've done is I've just fully rinsed out my brush and my brush is relatively wet. Um, make sure it doesn't drip on my paper by just giving it a quick rub. And then what I'm going to do is run it down this tree and it's going to smear smear my paint down the tree. Okay, dip it back in my water and reload. If you find it's picking up too much of the colour, put it back into your water and reload. do this next one that was behind give it another rinse and then I'm gonna do this one in front here. So you can see that this then starts to take on its own colour like a silver batch. It starts to become a bit more believable then. final rinse out to do this final side so I'm not being careful at all I just want to give those trees a little bit of dimension so we have our silver birches I'm not going to play with it too much because if I start playing with it these are going to start running a little bit too much I don't want that to happen so I'm quite happy with how they are at the moment I can come back to them in a minute once that water's dried in the meantime I'm going to go back to that lovely indigo blue that we made earlier because I need for my trees to cast some shadow now across my snow so I'm just going to mix a tiny bit more indigo into that because I want it to be a fairly deep blue colour. Now the sun's over here, so it's going to be casting a shadow this way. So try and bear in mind when you um, when you do your shadow for the tree, try and make sure it's in a believable line from the sun. So this first tree here, the one that's furthest away, is further over on the bank, and the sun is going to be casting a shadow somewhere over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of shadow around the base of the tree first. Okay. And then I'm going to bring the shadow out 
across here. Now it's going to, as it leaves the tree, it's going to become more and more pale. So I'm just going to use some water to make it less distinct the further away it goes. Okay? So if I show you this, so I've mixed some water into it. I want it to lose its definition as it goes further away from the tree. And then what I might do, just so that I can control a little bit better where it is, I'm just gonna mop up some of this so that I have this really indistinct line away from the tree. Okay, now I'm going to go back in and do another. So I pick up some of my indigo and I'm going to look where my sun is. And this tree here, this one behind, that's probably going to go in a similar direction. But we need to be careful because there's a silver birch in the way here. So again, I'm just going to make this less distinct as it goes on. Just going to pick up some of this water so that we can control a little where it is. Now I'm going to move on to the next one. So this one has got kind of one tucked in behind the other so we'll have to bear that in mind when we do this so I'm going to have one that comes down this way if you look at the positioning of the sun you want it coming down this way because if it went across like the other ones it wouldn't make sense. So I'm just making this a little bit less distinct now. Let's get a bit more of this tissue paper. So it's losing some of its distinction as it comes down the bank. And then we've got this other one that's kind of leaning out here. You see it's leaning out this way. So we need to have another one that's kind of leaning out here. going to lose some of that distinction. There you go. And then we've got one final one. This one right here at the front of the picture. So we're going to put some inky blue around the base of this. And then this is going to come off the paper this way. Okay, so that's it for our shadows for those. Now, I got myself a reference picture because I wanted to have a look at how the foliage of silver birches go in the winter. And uh, what I found was that for the most part, silver birches leaves, oh, if I can grab it, Sorry, leaning across. So silver birch's leaves go this kind of really gorgeous bright yellow. But what I want, because there's snow on the ground in mine, they will have lost a lot of their 
colour a lot of their leaves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a very thin brush now. It's actually a round brush, but it's, uh, it's more like a liner really, um, because I want, actually no, I might, I might use a liner brush. If you have a script liner, then that'd be really good because then we can get some lovely flicky lines from it. Let me see if I can find my script liner. So if you can make that lovely Payne's Grey and um, what did we use? Sepia, wasn't it? So Payne's Grey and Sepia combo. And then we're going to do a few little kind of limbs coming off of here. So if you kind of look at where some of the breaks are on the trees, like for instance, there's a little hump here on the tree. That might be a place where a limb would sprout. The same up here. Um, there's kind of a little bit sticking out here that would probably be sprouting a limb. So if you try and put it in a methodical way, however you've got imperfections in the bark, um, and then give yourself some limbs. So they can be coming out of, you can give yourself a seam if you don't have one like this. Sorry, it's a bit far, far away, but hopefully you can see. And then if you have a a thin little somebody coming out. So we only want a few little ones coming out here and there. So these script liners are really good because you can do real kind of thin, believable branches. So we just want a few here and there. So I'm gonna have another one coming out here. So if you give it kind of a wiggle at the base like that, you can make slightly sort of stouter branches, as it were. So I'm not going to have very many of these, I'm just going to do a few here and there. Because there's just going to be a few little kind of leaves hanging on. I want these to be quite kind of sparse. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at those. Now, do you remember a little while ago I said we were going to have the addition of some olive green? to add a little bit of kind of mossy um, sort of deposits on the side of our trees. So if we're gonna think about this scientifically, the moss would tend to grow on the side that doesn't see the sun a lot. So if the sun is rising here and it comes up over here, it stands to reason that where we can see, there's gonna be a few little kind of mossy deposits. So I'm literally just gonna do a few little little green areas on these just to make it look like it's been out of the sun. So this is an olive green I'm using and I'm just kind of touching it slightly into the sepia just to give it a kind of a slightly dirtier look. So just a few little bits on each one. I'm 
just helps to give a tiny little bit more believability to our trees. So just try and place it in a mindful way. to give a little bit of texture to the bark as well. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to do on that because otherwise I'm going to make it too uniform and I don't want to do that. So now we've got the, the sun rising on the trees. We've got a nice shadow being cast on the ground, which is believable, helps to add to the drama of it. What I want to do is add a tiny little bit of reflection of the sun just on this side of the tree because these are after all being flooded with that morning light so I'm just using a little bit of the the cadmium yellow and white combo that we used earlier just to put a tiny little bit of sun-kissed light on one side of the tree doesn't have to be like amazingly perfect. I just want a little bit, just to add a little bit of definition onto the tree here. Now it's got some of that light is kind of bathing across the tree. Now I want you to mix some real deep Indian yellow and some cadmium yellow because we're going to start and put some leaves on some of these branches. So we're only going to have a few because most of these leaves will be underneath the snow now. Um, so it's just going to have a few little hanging on leaves. So I'm not going to be careful with these. I'm literally just going to plonk colour because I just want a few little bits. Some of them aren't going to have any colour at all. Some are going to have quite a lot of colour. main thing is I want the ones that are there to be really rich and vibrant in opposition to the landscape that they find themselves which is quite bleak quite bare So I'm just going to go into a much richer colour, maybe 
maybe an English red. I want it to have that real vibrant orange about it. I just want a little bit of it in there just to bring up just allow it to bloom in those colours so that's just the last remnants Okay, how are we doing for time? Well, we've been on over an hour now, so I'll probably better stop there. Um, but, so what I'll do, I'll take my phone off of here and then you'll be able to have a better look. Oh, sorry, my tripod's very stiff. Right, so what we've got is the, um, the wintry trees over here are looking pretty nice and wintry now. I might add a little bit more definition Oh, I was going to add a, let's go in and add that few little twiggy trees that we were going to add. That was the plan before, wasn't it? Let's add a couple of those now. So I'm going to have one here. might add some a little bit of definition to these trees make them look a little bit more a little bit more pathetic Slightly darker, stumpier looking bush there. On the base of the trees here, what I might do is a tiny little bit of old grass poking through. it look a little bit more bleak so we've got the the silver birches here with most of their leaves dropped got the shadows it's casting on the snowy ground this snowy slope is kind of going into like a misty valley and these trees are kind of petering off into the distance and then we've got the clouds they're reflecting the sunrise. So you can see now the beams of light coming from the sun, making it a bit brighter. What you can do is you can go on in with a gouache or a little bit of white acrylic, make them more pronounced if you want. But I quite like them being light and watery like that. So I'm quite happy with that. I might add a couple more finishing touches a few bits maybe of grass and twiggy things and stuff poking out in random places maybe an old fence that's kind of been buried in the snow or something just to make it look a little bit bleaker but anyway I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you've learnt something from it. I hope that you've challenged yourself to do something different if you're a seasoned painter. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed doing something that's a little bit more wintry and looking at some different techniques. And um, let me turn it round so I can say goodbye properly. <laughs> so, oh, 
clattering around, sorry. <clears throat> so it's uh, been really lovely painting with you tonight and um, hopefully we're, it's something that we'll be able to carry on. Uh, it looks like we may be, there's a few rumours that we may be able to open, which would be really exciting um, since, uh, you know, we've only been offered able to offer the click and collect service um, which is lovely but it's um, this is the kind of shop that you want to browse really um, all the lovely sweet smelling things um, all the pretty things that we've had that people have spent so much time making and so much care and attention so it's really the kind of shop that that you want to browse and we appreciate that and it's not much fun browsing from the window so um, so thank you so much for all your patience um, with us opening and bringing things out to you and things like that um obviously it's not an ideal scenario but i really hope that in us um doing our click and collect and playing our part i hope that um the numbers continue to go down and that you all manage to stay safe and well um and let's hope that we can open properly so that you can come and do some christmas shopping with us mm -hmm.